Hi. 2014 was a big year for me. I graduated from the master's program at the U of I in social work, became employed at a local high school, and I became a foster mom. Part of me wants to say how rewarding this is, and another part of me must say that I am exhausted by the systems at play. Often when foster care is presented by churches or other agencies, it's shown from a sugar-coated white savior lens. I want to be clear right now that these kids don't need saving. Our children need safety and a village to walk alongside them and their families. The way we talk about human beings and their experiences matters. The goal of foster care is to provide a temporary safe home for children and for them to be reunified with their families of origin, although some foster families do end up adopting if parental rights are terminated. Relationship with families of our children is a huge part of being a foster parent. People ask me what being a foster parent is like. We bring kids into our homes and take care of them as if they're ours, but then they leave. It's like having pieces of my heart walking around this earth without me. Being a foster parent means being willing to work on the hard stuff that's within yourself. Because let me tell you, love is not enough. Parenting kids and care should always be trauma informed, but it will be full of mistakes. That's why it's so important to have a village of support around every single foster family. It takes time to learn these parenting skills. Trauma-informed parenting may not be necessary when you're parenting your own biological kids, but it is of the utmost importance when parenting youth in care. Feelings of shame and rejection and being unsafe are already prevalent in our kids' hearts, so building a feeling of safety, connection, and regulation are priority. There is a huge need for people to foster older children, meaning elementary age and older. I'm a huge fan of comfort and sleep, and guess who else loves sleep? teenagers. I think there are lots of worries that come with having an older child in your home, and I'll be honest, those concerns can be legit. But there are a ton of really awesome things about caring for older kids. They can independently make their own food and care for their basic needs. They sleep through the night, and they might even enjoy some of the same things you do, like movies and sports. Older kids understand humor, and I think that is my favorite thing about raising them. Older kids need people in their life saying, I see you, you can do this, and I believe in you. There are just under half a million youth in foster care in this country. Over 100,000 of them are waiting and able to be adopted. The children waiting to be adopted are mostly older and sometimes have behavioral or medical needs. They, too, deserve to have a happy family. In Illinois alone, there are over 15,000 kids in foster care, and as of right now, 339 youth in care live in Champaign County. We have an amazing opportunity to give to kids in CU because we have many agencies working with our youth. There are children who grow up in residential settings for years because there are not enough people saying yes to foster care, especially for older kids. Children deserve to be in homes, period. With the exception of the most severe cases where safety is a concern, no child should have to spend even one night in a shelter, and no child's parent should actually be a list of rotating staff. So how does this impact us? Community violence, poverty, incarceration, drug use, homelessness, mental illness, kids grow up. Those who become adults without a family to call their own often have bleak outcomes. Every year, 20,000 youth age out of the system without a family connection. Within 18 months of aging out, 40 to 50 percent of these youth become homeless. One in four youth who age out will not graduate high school or receive their GED. Only half who age out will have some form of gainful employment by age 24. Exposure to violence and trauma impact the brain and relationship wiring. When the ability to understand others' perspectives is impaired, poor choices which can impact the safety of others might be made. Almost 60% of young men aging out of foster care have been convicted of a crime. One out of every two who age out will develop substance dependence. An incredible number of adults in the criminal justice system are actually victims of unhealed trauma. Sex trafficking in our country and this community is real. Pimps regularly target vulnerable girls who are disconnected from a sense of family. Studies show average age of entry into prostitution is between 12 and 14 years old. 
around 70% of trafficking survivors in this country were in foster care at some point. And by the way, where there are drugs being sold, there are girls being sold. This is a complete failure of our country to protect the most vulnerable. Connection with others is the number one resiliency factor that can offset the impact of trauma. Lack of connection keeps people vulnerable to dangerous situations. Lack of options for healing and wellness prevent individuals from feeling whole. This is why it's so important for a healthy village to be present from the start. It's okay that not everyone is able to be a foster parent, but there are ways that anyone can help. One way is to volunteer as a court-appointed special advocate. CASA volunteers are a voice in court for abused and ne neglected children, and they report on what is in the best interest for the child. Unfortunately, not all kids have a CASA because more volunteers are needed. Ask foster families what they need. They have to quickly pull together all of the clothing and hygiene needs for children of various ages at short notice. You can offer a talent such as braiding or haircuts, give gift cards, organize meal trains, donate to organizations who work with the system. By far, one of the biggest needs is respite care and babysitting. There are several mentoring groups within our community to wrap around all kids, not just those in care. Please consider being a mentor. Also, check out CU Trauma and Resiliency Initiative, which is tirelessly educating our community and stakeholders about prevention, intervention, and postvention in crisis and trauma. An African proverb says, the child who is not embraced by the village will burn it down to feel its warmth. Kids in pain become adults in pain. Healing and wellness is a team effort, and we need you to join this village. Thank you.